Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Shaquille Salam and welcome to another edition of uh, The Healthy Bites. This is the special program for month of Ramadan um, and we invite uh, various guests from a different health profession to talk to you about having a, a healthy Ramadan. Today we're going to talk about the blood pressure, the impact it has and how to control your blood pressure during month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Abdul Manan. How well, are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm thank fine. you very you? much, and uh, <laughs> thank you very much for coming again. You're welcome. Um, blood pressure, yeah. again, is a massive issue with community, mm. and especially in month of Ramadan, yeah. our blood pressure probably go up because we're not <laughs> eating, we're getting tired. Shouldn't do. We're getting stressed. <laughs> <laughs> so is it true that we get a bit uh, stressed and uh, our blood pressure go up and down? Um, well, there is some truth, and um, there, there's been a number of uh, uh, studies actually, around about the late 80s actually, um, uh, a couple of uh, teams um, uh, in the Middle East and also in uh, Eastern Europe. Um, uh, there was a few studies I was reading a few weeks ago, and, and, and it was talking about how um, uh, they noticed the levels of stress going up among hospital staff. Uh, they were comparing uh, uh, and contrasting people who were fasting and who weren't fasting, and it's true, stress levels do actually uh, go up in Ramadan. So there's a number of reasons, I, I suppose. And the stress is linked to blood pressure, is it? Eh, it can be. It can be. People uh, Generally, as the day goes, as our stress levels rise, yeah, blood pressure, there is a correlation between the two. Um, so there's probably some so, truth in what you're saying. So why why we need to talk about blood pressure in month of Ramadan? Um, I mean, as you alluded to earlier on, I guess it's because um, it's a common problem. Um, in the, not necessarily the Muslim population, but the Asian population and further down south, um, you know, the Afro-Caribbean uh, population. Um, you, the rates, the prevalence uh, of high blood pressure is higher uh, in those communities. And, um, you know, a lot of people from those communities are fasting in Ramadan, so it becomes an issue, doesn't it? It does. It is. So let's talk about, just explain, you know, for people in yeah. general layman terms, yeah. what is blood pressure okay. and why we need to worry about it? Okay. Well, very basically, um, you know, your heart, you know, over, over here. Where, right. where is heart here? Over here. Is it this? Over yeah. here. Okay. Right there. Um, there you go. Um, it's, it's a pump. Huh? It's pumping away. All right. So when it's, um, you know, squeezes itself, yeah, um, it's throwing blood out through, throughout your body, okay? And that um, is a pressure, okay? So when we measure blood pressure, there's two readings. So that reading, the high reading, is when your heart is, you know, squeezing itself, and that pushes blood out. And that's pressure, you know, against, you know, all the pipes, all the arteries okay. that the blood goes through. So that's uh, the systolic, or the, uh, you know, the re reading here at the top, yeah? Um, and the bottom reading is when your heart is kind of relaxed, okay? So it's not pumping, it's just relaxed. And at that time, whatever the pressure is uh, in your pipes, your arteries, um, that's the reading at the bottom, diastolic. Uh, and that's blood pressure, basically. It's mm. a reading of pressure in your pipes, in your uh, blood vessels. Okay, so what is the normal blood pressure? What is the reading people need to look at <coughs> is as normal and they don't need to worry about it? Um, I mean, what is normal? It's questionable, really, whether there is such a thing. Uh, because as we know, as we get uh, wiser in life, as we get older in life, normal blood pressure does actually go up anyway. Okay. Um, so if you do a blood pressure in a young lady, for example, um, it, it might be 110 over 60. Now, you might think, oh, that's a bit low. Yeah. But actually, for her, it's fine. You know, you do the blood pressure in, say, a 55-year-old gentleman, and his blood pressure is 138 over 86. Now, you might turn around to me and say, oh, that sounds a bit mm. high. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you, actually, no, that's you okay. All right. We're not going to panic, all right? We might talk to him about lifestyle and, you know, uh, living healthy and so forth, but we're not going to call him, um, we're not going to necessarily call him hypertensive or say he's got hypertension or high blood pressure, you know? So, generally speaking, um, if your blood pressure is going above that top reading of 140, 
and it's staying there. If it, that bottom reading is going above 90 and it's staying there, then we might think about calling you hypertensive, labeling you as having hypertension and doing something about it to bring it down. Okay. Um, and when, is there any signs or symptoms we need to keep an eye where our blood pressure is going up or down? There, therein lies the difficulty, I'm afraid. Um, it's one of those diseases or conditions we call like a silent uh, condition. Um, most people are walking around out there um, and they, will, they won't experience any symptoms. You know, no headaches, no neck aches, no tension, no nothing. Um, they'll be absolutely fine, yet um, they may car be carrying high blood pressure. Other people um, we come across, they may feel tired, they may feel a neck pain, they may feel heavy-headed, they may feel flushed and congested. Um, you come across those situations as well. But yeah. there isn't any specific I can give you, I'm afraid. What are the main causes why people get blood, uh, high blood pressure? Mm. What, what are the key? I mean, um, as we alluded to earlier on, it's common among the Asian Afro-Caribbean population. Why? Um, why it is? With, well, there's actually good evidence there is a hereditary element, I'm afraid. Okay. Some of us are more prone to high blood pressure than other people. If it runs in your family, for example, chances are you're more at risk. Okay. Um, so there is a hereditary genetic element, I suppose. And then there are the non-hereditary elements. Um, so you mentioned stress. Uh, there is good correlation between high levels of stress mm -hmm. and blood pressure. Okay. Um, we, we talk about sleep and you know, when you wake up. Generally, there is good correlation between lack of sleep and um, uh, having high blood pressure. How do I know that? There are studies which show that people who, uh, you know, they do shifts, shift work. People who are up a lot in the night when they should be asleep. Um, there is evidence to show that high blood pressure in that population is a lot more common. Okay. Yeah? So in month of Ramadan, yeah. your sleep pattern has changed dramatically. Yeah. Sure. So are we concerned about people's blood pressure going up? Probably not in the sense that, you know, in terms of giving you high blood pressure, all right? Yes, you may be more stressed. Yes, your blood pressure might be slightly up because of that. But no, uh, will it give you hypertension, a condition as such, just because you're fasting? No, no. no. We're talking about, you know, these long-term lifestyle changes, somebody working shift patterns, um, other factors, for example, somebody smoking uh, regularly, um, alcohol, uh, in, 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 in people who consume alcohol, um, high salt diet, yeah? And that is, that is probably something we need to think about in month of Ramadan, isn't yeah. it? Because there's a lot of cooking going on, yeah. and there's a lot of food which normally we don't probably have, mm -hmm. even on Eid day, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have every Aftari time. Yeah. So salt content need to be reduced to avoid blood pressure? Absolutely, absolutely. As you know, um, the favorite foods such as uh, your pakoras and your chana, your uh, um, parana, biryanis and all and, sorts of things, and so forth, high salt, uh, high salt uh, content. Um, generally, we should try and reduce the amount of salt we put in our food anyway, um, and not consume foods which um, are high in sodium content. Generally. In Ramadan, uh, we should make that extra effort to avoid uh, foods like that. And I know it sounds painful, and I'm probably going to be upsetting a few <laughs> people out there. I know in Ramadan, we like to have a treat. I'm not saying we can't, yeah? Um, so, but it needs to be very well controlled, very small amounts of this type of food, uh, and more geared towards you know, your, the healthier type of food um, that we are supposed to. Uh, consuming Ramadan. Okay, so again my question is for people with potentially high blood pressure yeah. or avoid the blood, high yeah. blood pressure, yeah. any recommended food? You know salt is definitely uh, reduction in salt is, is the key yeah. thing. Is there any specific food which has high, con I mean especially processed food and you know the takeaway yeah. food yeah. Uh, mostly probably have more content in terms uh, of salt? Yes, um, there, 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 is, uh, there are studies uh, where people have looked at 
processed foods, foods from uh, restaurants and takeaways and so forth. And generally, uh, we found that um, this type of food contains high amounts of salt, okay. high amounts of preservatives, and various other ingredients that aren't uh, advisable in a healthy diet. So yeah, salt being the, being the main question, um, you'd probably want to avoid uh, this type of food as much as possible. Okay. Again, I'm upsetting people. Mangoes? Is you okay to... <laughs> you love your mangoes, mangoes, don't you? Yeah. Um, no. Blood pressure. I mean, it? certainly not, you know, nothing, not, not much salt in a mango, but it's the sugar content um, in mango. Uh, there's absolutely no um, issues there in regards to blood pressure. No. But people um, with diabetes need to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, what, what we say is um, stick to um, low salt diet. Uh, stick to food um, that um, is good in terms of balance. So you've got good amount of carbs, uh, good amount of proteins, good amounts of fats, um, rather than being top heavy on fats, you know, on sugars, which unfortunately is the problem uh, we have in Ramadan, uh, overconsumption of a certain category of, of food, which isn't good for us. Yeah, and you mentioned about you know, the, 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 although it's not a great deal, but there is a pattern has changed. People are eating probably more mm -hmm. in less time yeah, and not doing any exercise, which we have very limitations, isn't it? Of course. Um, and, and, and not absorbing mm. all the food yeah. and just going to bed. How difficult it is, you know, like for people to just have a full meal yeah. and go straight to sleep. Look, um, I, um, I fully appreciate and I fully sympathise. Um, so I'm not going to stand here and tell people off or be, um, you know, for want of a better word, uh, you know, un be unappreciative or t for people. I mean, you know, people have prob probably got work the next day. People have various uh, reasons mm -hmm. for why they may be doing that. Um, as you know, the recommendation is in Ramadan to do your iftar but also to do your sehri yeah. as well. That is uh, sunnah, and um, it's important that we stick to that because there is reward. There is a reward in that. Um, from a health point of view, I think there are important uh, benefits there as well. Okay. Why? Because what I would rather you did is have a healthy, normal portion of food at iftar time, you know, uh, or a light meal, but then follow that up with regular amounts of fluids and have a decent, healthy iftar as well. That will serve you better for the hours of fasting than one large meal uh, that you've had at uh, iftar. People are different, I fully appreciate that. Some people are probably, f even if they stay awake, and I know people who do that, even if they stay awake, they just have the... Because it's such a short space of time, they physically can't eat two meals. That's what they tell me. And so they say, doctor, you know, I just can't eat twice. So um, I eat um, uh, at iftari time, and then at sehri time, I'll have maybe uh, a cup of tea and some dates or something like that, um, which is fair enough. If, that's, if they can manage on that, it's mm -hmm. not a problem. Uh, but generally, we would say small meals, uh, but you know, have both your uh, meals that you're allowed to have, you know, and make it easy for you in the day. Let's talk about people who had high blood pressure and yeah. they're on certain medication. Yes. And if they want to fast, mm. what advice would you give it to them? Number one, don't um, make changes. Yourself. Yourself. Or don't stop tablets yourself. Um, I have one... I can think of one situation where I came across this with one of my patients where he, he stopped um, quite an important tablet. Now, yes, it does control his blood pressure, uh, but the problem is when he comes off it, his blood pressure goes, swings up, and it goes really high, you see. So some tablets, it will do that. When you stop it suddenly, before Ramadan, it will very quickly raise your blood pressure up again because you're not on it anymore. And that's quite dangerous. So that's why it's important to speak to your GP um, and see what he or she suggests in terms of whether you reduce tablets, whether you adjust the dose um, in terms of 
how often or when you take it. And last but not least, probably very, very important, whether you should even be uh, fasting. Okay. Yeah? Your hypertension, your condition might be so bad that uh, it's not safe uh, for you to fast. Okay. Like diabetes, people have machine at home and they check their yeah. sugar level on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, same applies to blood pressure. People who have yeah. uncontrolled blood pressure, they've mm -hmm. been advised to check. Normally they go to their GP or see a nurse. Uh, if people want to check at home during month of Ramadan, mm. is there any specific recommendation what time they can have this check? Or sometimes, you know, like you just eat a full meal yeah. at Aftari. Yeah. Uh, is that the best time to check or during the middle of the day? Or is there any, any specific mm. timing when you, because it could be up and down in certain times, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I personally don't use... Um, blood pressure machines from home right. for any diagnostic or therapeutic reasons. If I want to know how well your blood pressure is controlled, I'll give you a machine from my surgery which stays on your arm for a full day and it gives me lots of readings and based on that I will make my adjustments. Alternatively, I may give you a machine that you keep for a full week okay. at home and you measure at different times um, to give me an idea of how your blood pressures are. The problem with um, the ones at home and the reason why we don't use them is because um, in time, machines can become what we call uncalibrated. Okay. The calibration can um, go. Uh, I'm not saying they become, uh, you can't use them, but they may not be as accurate as the ones we have okay. in the surgery. The, my machines, for example, they get calibrated every few months. Okay. We have a company coming in and they will measure these machines and make sure they're accurate. Yeah? So that's the reason uh, I, uh, I don't yeah, use very good uh, that method. However, uh, where a patient wants to keep a machine at home, just to keep an eye on things, um, I, I don't discourage that. That's fine. And they then ask me, well, Doc, when, when shall I, you know, as you are um, asking me. Uh, and I say a good time is probably um, when you wake up in the morning because that's the, you, you're relaxed and you can see what your baseline blood pressure is because you've just woken up you've not stressed yourself out um, and you can just um, see what your blood pressure is okay uh, another good time would be um, before you, you you're going to bed you know uh, when you when you're in bed you've relaxed a bit uh, do it then so that gives you an idea of what your blood pressure is like uh, when you're most relaxed all right um, how important is it to do in the daytime? Well, some people want to know, ooh, how high is my blood pressure after work? <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. If you want to know, that's good. Do it uh, at that time and find out. That can be useful in certain circumstances, but as I said to you earlier, yeah. um, some people like to do it. I don't stop them doing it. Um, I don't generally use them for my mm. med, um, you know, therapeutic reasons. That's really good. Let's, let's move on to look at, we talk about, hypertension and looking at high blood pressure. Yeah. We heard that some people describe their blood pressure as low blood pressure. Yes. Is that something to concern about it? Uh, of course, especially in Ramadan. All right, okay. Absolutely. Um, because um, this is a category of patients where you're doing the opposite. What you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the blood pressure high. Well, not high, high, but you're trying to bring it up to level to normal because they're dropping it so they may be on medication to do that also their lifestyle helps in some way for example how much salt they're consuming can also um, be helping towards keeping their uh, blood pressure up now in Ramadan if they are not eating well or not enough can you see how the blood pressure can drop even more yeah. And there's a problem there. So that's why, again, it, the advice is the same in terms of you need to speak to your doctor and ask, should I be fasting in the first place? If the answer is yes, then um, look at your medication. Look at your typical diet and what your typical diet will be like in Ramadan. Talk to your doctor about it and see. Um, you know, do, would you, are you going to need some monitoring during Ramadan? Uh, should you be fasting at all? If you do fast, 
um, your doctor may need to review you uh, during the month uh, one or two times to see how you're getting on. So, uh, yeah, the answer is you need to be careful. Okay, and final message, mm. just summarize, what, what, what advice would you give to people yeah. in month of Ramadan controlling their blood pressure? Okay, um, number one, um, don't do anything yourself, all right? Don't adjust medications or anything like that. See your doctor, get some advice, and then um, come to an agreement as to how, whether you fast, number one, and if you fast, how are you going to fast? Uh, diet and fluids, very important to pace yourself between iftar and sehri so that you're eating the right type of food, balanced meals, watch the sodium amount you have, salt amount you have um, in that time, plenty of fluids, um, and in the daytime, you really need to look after yourself, pace yourself, keep an eye out for at the moment, sunshine for example, don't um, dehydrate yourself because that can affect your blood pressure as well, so uh, be careful uh, as, as a day, just take it easy. That's great, thank you very much, and this was uh, Dr. Abdul Manan talking about uh, controlling your blood pressure in month of Ramadan. Dr. Abdul Manan, thank you very much uh, uh, for talking to us and giving us really good advice. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum